This is Francesco and Martin, and we're going to record a short conversation around the question, does a Scrum Master need to be able to code? Now, I'm going to start the debate with my position, which is no. And the reason I would give for that is because I'm a Scrum Master. I have been for 12, 13 years on and off, Scrum Master coach, team coach, and I can't code. And I can function in the job. I'm making a living out of it. Therefore, I'm living proof. I'm a scrum master and I can't code. Therefore, scrum masters don't need to code. However, that's not the end of it. I'm really aware of the should I be able to element. I'm asking myself sometimes, what am I missing? What am I unable to do? What gaps does that leave in my work? But also, what opportunities does that bring that would not be there if I was using coding knowledge? So I'm leaning to know, what do you think, Frankie? I think that I cannot disagree with your initial statement. So I, you are the living proof and even one person is enough to prove something. So thank you for sorting out the, the bigger question of the debate. Should a Scrum Master, does a Scrum Master need to learn how to code? No, I agree to that. But I hope I can contribute to, to answer the other question, your personal question, which is, should they? And I believe in certain circumstances, yes, they should. It's highly beneficial for them and for the team. And consider my background, I was a software developer. I had been a developer for over 10 years before I started the, uh, dipping my, my feet into the agile water as a scrum master, temporary, rotational scrum master first, and then a permanent one. Uh, I can see the benefits. I can see the difference between, in certain contexts, between someone with my background and someone else who was a different background. Hmm. Hmm. And from what I've, what I've read about the original intention of the Scrum Master, as, as, as uh, Jeff Sutherland and Ken Schwaber put it together, I, I think that almost certainly they would have been um, aghast at the idea that a Scrum Master doesn't code. Certainly when Scrum launched in the in the late mid, mid to late 90s, they had the vision that Scrum Master would actually rotate amongst the engineers. I think the profession has moved on a lot. I mean, of course, Scrum is now used in things that are not even tech, in education. So why would the coding need, need to be a skill there? Maybe it's domain knowledge is, 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 is actually the real question. Let me ask you a question though, and stick with tech for now, Frankie. Um, is there a danger that your coding knowledge or any Scrum Master's coding knowledge becomes a hindrance, for example, if it goes out of date? Most definitely, yeah, yes. And that has been my, what has been my experience with the, the first professional Scrum Master I worked with. Uh, they stopped coding 10 years uh, before I met them. And they were still trying to, to bring to the table, inject into conversation, the perspective they had acquired at the time and the knowledge they had at the time. And while certain principles remain true, uh, certain things have been proven wrong. One, one of the reasons that make coding so hard is that the, the paradigm are shifting all the time and they're being turned upside down. So something that felt like the, the best thing to do today will probably become the worst thing to do in five to 10 years time. Mm. So not being abreast can be an hindrance yeah. if you don't let go. Yeah. And you remind me of, of uh, a, a developer I was speaking to a couple of years ago, not somebody I worked with that was at a conference, but we were talking afterwards and it, it, I got all impressions. He was a specialist at his game. He was at the top of his game in, a, in the front end um, development world. And he, he said something to me like um, he has to put seven months worth of work in to keep, to keep up with six months worth of industry change um or whatever the numbers were but what he was saying is it's just like full-time job and, and more to 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 be at the cutting edge and it made me really think even if i wanted to start to learn some code i don't have the lifespan left to be able to do it you know um if somebody like that has to work so hard so yeah maybe the coding scrub master could also end up with entrenched in those experiences from a long time ago, maybe they end up with pet solutions or preferred design patterns, which are, as you say, are not moving on. And then perhaps the ego gets a little bit involved and, and the Scrum Master doesn't let go. Um, I like to think that because I don't have that, because I cannot talk about a preferred design pattern or, or programming language, 
I'll do something else. I have to listen uh, and I have to really think carefully about my next questions. So to me, that, that's an opportunity uh, and, and it usually works. I've worked with hundreds of developers over the years and there's probably only two or three who've actually flung it back at me and said, you don't know what you're talking about. Have they seen alive? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in you, yes. And th that's really interesting what you said there. I was thinking at the beginning, when I was gathering thoughts of this conversation, the, the, the first one that came to my mind as a pro, an argument in favor of mm. uh, having coding experience is that I felt there would have been an easier way to connect to teams and gain their respect. Uh, but now you're saying that you have a sort of, allow me to say, a secret weapon. You just listen to them. Mm. There's definitely the connection element. I mean, I've, I've picked up enough sort of familiarity with the concepts of software, and especially when I stay in my own sort of domain of digital e-commerce apps kind of stuff, um, put me in something very different, like big data, and I do feel a bit uncomfortable there because I don't have that relation with the, with the concepts of big data and algorithms and that that kind of thing. Yeah, where's where's that line? Do I need to be able to engage with them? Because I can't unblock developers. If a developer says I'm, I'm stuck on this bit of code, my best answer is let me try and find another developer who can help you. I, I, am, I wouldn't even attempt to look at the code. However, sometimes just a question about the logic of what they're trying to do or the approach can, can un unstick them. And I believe that's where having experience what coding look like and help you. Uh, like in anything, understanding what's the thought process, the, the developers, but could be, this is relevant, apply to any job. Uh, any of the people who support will have a typical thought process because they will be facing challenges that are common and so they, uh, they will probably go about it in a certain way. Yes, everyone is different, can be massively different, but the type of struggles, the type of time pressure, the type of uh, unexpected faults that can happen is typically similar across a profession. Having faced those firsthand help you building the empathy and also understanding better where are the blind spots. Mm. And so with that, it can be easier to suggest them, why, why don't we go out and take a coffee instead of, you know, uh, keep banging your head against the monitor because you don't understand this thing. Mm. versus appreciating more the value of being in the flow. If you've never been in the flow, it's harder to understand how important it can be for them. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's the empathy side of things. You've got to, you've got to work harder to tune into what, yes. they, what are they struggling with in, in the code. And yeah, I do have to dig hard on that. I think. Also there, there, there is probably something that I'm still struggling with is uh, reconciling my understanding of the role with what are the expectations of the people around me based mm -hmm. on their understanding of the role, which is probably based on the version that you described at the beginning. It was okay to be a rotational thing for one of the, the engineers, the team members, it was not such a deep uh, and wide profession as it is today. Uh, I believe it was more around facilitating some things and getting experience in Agile, which was at the beginning. So the body of knowledge and expertise there was probably just a nugget compared to what it is today. Um, now things have changed significantly. First of all, as you mentioned, we've moved away from applying Scrum and Agile only to IT projects. This can be applied to many other uh, areas. But also the team matures over time. And so what you can help with at the beginning, for example, you have a, a moment of crunch, you can help with testing or with code reviews, which requires you to be a little bit less expert. And these are, and here I understand that some coders who may be listening may, may start shouting, no, that's not true, uh, different perspectives. Uh, <laughs> I, I think there, for example, bringing in, that's precisely one of those aspects where bringing in someone who doesn't, and now I'm leaning toward your argument, Someone who doesn't have a clue at all about what's written there can help massively in improving the quality of the code because it, it can be, depending on the language, not all the languages, I love that, the programming languages, but it can be written in a way that is readable also by humans. Hmm. Humans Indeed. that don't have 10 years of training behind, behind them. 
uh, and so bringing in fresh eyes can help actually improving the quality of people who otherwise been super expert they would get entangled in the most convoluted yeah. And doing a code walkthrough, you know, do, explaining this is what this these lines and these classes are doing in 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 layman's terms. I mean, this is I have noticed this as well when I, I'll listen to the developers and hear about what they're trying to accomplish, and usually often I'll play it back to them in kind of noddy terms. I'll say, well, so what I've just heard is you're trying to you're trying to connect this to that and get a login request or something, you know, whatever the example is, and they'll go exactly. So it seems to have it seems to have provided a kind of assurance that when they've spoken through it with a, a you know a, an idiot like me, uh, and I get it that they've got a degree of uh, assurance that that what they're doing is okay and that they're okay to to proceed. So yeah, maybe code reviews are something the non coding scrum master can can leverage to to help the team. So I think we're moving maybe away what sounds to me is that you're moving away from the initial question do you need or even should you know how to code but it starts to be should you be involved a little bit more in what happens in the day-to-day -day life of uh, developers should you always stay at the arm length or should you get a little bit deeper into the understanding i think there's no good reason to stay a few good reasons to to not get involved in the domain that you're working in. Now you've got to watch that. It doesn't overcrowd, overwhelm the scrum mastery that you that you need to that you need to perform. So if let's go, let's snap back to that question actually as we reach the end of the the, 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 the cast. Um, does a scrum master need to code? Well if the scrum master is coding, they're one of the team. And if they're one of the team, they're embroiled in working on giving user stories, they're involved in day-to-day -day peer reviews and, and all, all the work that the engineers do. How much time have they got to really observe and detach themselves from, you know, the, the hat that they're wearing and observe what's going on at a, at a team behavior and a team vibe level? I think that would be, that's a challenge because they've got to consciously step out of the code. And, that, you know, it's very different from coding for three hours a day and then jumping on a, a, a on a call or a meeting to to, to run a retro and then going back to the code that that's that's not a, that's not a clean break is it um scrum master you want to you want to prepare for the retro you want to reflect on what you've observed over the last two two weeks or whatever and um, you want to think of a new think of a, a energizer and a facilitation technique so coding having the day job as as a coder can can get in the way of that absolutely you you would also have opinions and so you're not it's just impossible to remain an impartial facilitator, mm. even in the way you are perceived by the others. They, they will always think, oh, you're skin in the game. You don't want to do this or you want to do that. You want to push for your solution. Uh, and even in, even if you actively try not to, in, unconsciously, you will have your opinions and you will have your fears. It's going to be hard not to be emotionally attached to a solution that you've been part of. So totally agree with you. Being involved, but I would extend it not just as a developer, but as any team member is a bad thing. So even if you know how to do the job, being involved into the development of any task, it's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very, very hard to, to do it properly, if possible at all. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that we've moved from perhaps Jeff and Ken's original idea that it's it, it, everyone in the team is so kind of on board with agile and thinking and everyone's got the emotional maturity to, to do that such that it, the scrum master can merely rotate. We now know 20 years on having tried it in thousands of enterprises that it, it's a full-time role. There's a lot of strong cases for it being a full-time role hard to describe hard to master as we know through our work Agreed. so that's bringing us to the end of our time box uh great debate i think great i think debate, both indeed. answers apply don't they i think uh yes i guess we, we could have started with the the, the 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 answer that answers them all it depends it depends indeed <laughs> yeah. should we leave our dear listeners with that then it depends Yes, and maybe maybe a prompt for them to comment and let us know what they think about it. 